fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Voyager Class Bludgeon from the Transformers Legacy Evolution line from Hasbro. So this is the first one I've received from Wave 4. Wave 4 is starting to trickle out on Amazon. I think some people are starting to find it in stores as well. But I got most of my stuff from Amazon. It all kind of came like within the same day. So that's kind of fun. Now this does say Comic Universe. I don't know if they mean the original Marvel comics. They're talking about IDW. I know Bludgeon was a figure back in the original G1 toy line. But I'm assuming he just got his popularity from one of the Comic Universes. So if you know specifically which one, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But artwork here on the box, very, very cool. Of course, we are sticking with the plastic-free packaging, so you have the open window here. You can see the figure inside. Nice artwork of the vehicle mode here on the front, and really cool artwork of the robot mode here on the side. I love him using the sword. I think that helmet's fantastic. So really excited for this. You have your standard half of the picture for Legacy Evolution. Not really much going on in the bottom. Got the logo and the QR code for the tech specs up here on the top. Spinning it around to the back, it's some product shots of the robot mode and the vehicle mode. Now, of course, you can probably tell right away this is a repaint slash remold of Tarn from, I think, Wave 2. Uh, but it looks really, really good. I'm really excited for this one. Evo Fusion, you can connect the two guns together. Evo Fusion just needs to go away. Anyway, in any case, let's go ahead. Let's get Bludgeon out of the packaging here and let's take a closer look. Here is Bludgeon out of the packaging. He looks absolutely fantastic. The tar mold was really solid. I mean, it really has no kibble whatsoever. Yes, it does have the extra set of tank treads up here on the shoulder, but really just a beautiful robot mode here. Nothing hanging off the back, no backpack of any kind. Just really nice and clean. And this was a really good use of that mold to repaint as bludgeon. Head sculpt looks amazing. They did a really nice job with that. I love the samurai helmet. The eyes are painted very nicely red. Nice silver there for the rest of the face. You kind of have the eyes here for the skull-like chest. You have the Decepticon symbol there. Color scheme's amazing. You have your reds and orange and green. All looks really, really good. Now, the funny thing is, uh, Tarn had these too. Now, for Bludgeon, they kind of look like his swords, but those are not his swords. They're just kind of these pieces that hang on the front. If you like them better down, you can go ahead and flip that down. He does come with a sword accessory, which is very nicely done. It's in the red color here, but then, of course, the blade is painted silver. And then if you want, you can go ahead and peg this onto the back so that it looks like he has the sword over his shoulder, which I really like that look. I think that looks really cool. Now, obviously, if you flip these up, I feel like it kind of muddies that look because then it looks like he's kind of got like three swords back there, which I don't really like as much. So I kind of like to flip these down. So that he can just have the one sword there on the back. I think that looks kind of cool. Now the other thing you can do, of course, if you have him using the sword, then you could put these up to almost look like he's got additional swords. And of course he does come with the same cannons that um, Tarn had. So we can take this, uh, flip this piece around. I'll be honest with you, I don't really know why this piece rotates. Because it seems like most configurations have you have it in this like configuration i don't really know why it flips around <laughs> like that um it's a little weird but it's fine i guess you can go ahead and peg these in like this and then you can just go ahead and peg this onto the back in that same spot that i was using for the sword and then you can have the look of the cannons there on the back which i think looks pretty cool and of course you can um spin this around if we pop this off and pop it on like so then you can maybe i'll move these down for the time being rotate these around and he can have kind of an over the shoulder cannon look so you have a lot of options with these accessories pretty much everything that tarn could do i don't know why this is unpegging here on me there so there we go so you can have the cannons over the shoulder you can kind of put these back up um they would kind of just rest on the side. That looks a little too busy to me. So like I said, if you want to just have these down, they can just peg in down there. And then you don't even really see them because they kind of line up perfectly with the legs. So they don't really show up. And then you can just kind of have either the sword on the back or the cannons on the back. Of course, you can take this and flip this around. And then this can peg on to the forearm here, just like with Tarn. So if you want to... I guess maybe maybe it's down here. Maybe this is why this piece flips around. So that way you can kind of put it here 
and it sits better on the arms. I'm guessing that's what that's for, because then you can have the nice cannons here on the arms. Now, of course, you can take this piece and put it completely away, and you can just use the guns. You can just hold the guns. You can dual wield the guns here like this. And that's kind of cool. And then, of course, the Evo Fusion gimmick is to take the two guns and just peg one into the other and give him this ridiculously long rifle. And it is kind of cool. You can actually have him hold it two-handed like that. I think that's pretty cool. So, again, you have a lot of options with the accessories. You can dual wield the two guns, use the two guns, have the guns mounted on the forearm, mounted on the back, shoulder cannons, and then, of course, you have the sword as well, which looks great, and he can just hold that normally. So, a lot of options. I think that's really cool. I love all the options with the weapons, and I'm so glad they included the sword because it's so iconic to his character, so you definitely need that. But yeah, they just did a great job. This is a really nice repaint. The accessories are fantastic. I like that quite a bit. Let's go ahead and get into articulation. If you have Tarn already, you're probably not going to be too surprised by the amount of articulation. Heads on a ball joint, kind of limited, can look up a little bit, look down a little bit, even tilt side to side very slightly, but you're mostly just looking side to side. Nice hinge here in the shoulder, good range of motion there. You have a rotation front to back. You have a bicep swivel right above the elbow. And I would say maybe slightly more than 90, but like 92 degrees in the elbow there. You have a wrist rotation and the fingers can open as well, which is very nice. It doesn't, you know, change like holding accessories or anything because they kind of pop into the perfect circle that's made by the rest of the hand and the thumb. But you can open up the fingers there if you like, which is kind of cool. You have a waist swivel. Really nice range of motion in the hip. And I kind of like the way this green piece kind of rotates back with the leg. So it doesn't hinder anything and it's not a flap you have to lift up. So it kicks very far forward. Very far back. Really far out to the side. Thigh swivel there. You have a double jointed knee which is mostly used for transformation. But if you want to utilize it in robot mode you absolutely can. Otherwise you have one probably 110, 120 degree, maybe there on the knee. You have ankle tilt, and then of course you have front to back as well for the transformation. So again, a lot of nice articulation. It is the Tarn mold, which was a really solid mold. And speaking of Tarn, here is his mold brother. They look good together. Honestly, they both look really good. It's a great mold, and they're both done really well. But yet they look fairly different like of course you can see the similarities but because the paint schemes are so different and the heads and everything they do feel like two you know very different robot modes even though it's the same mold like it's done with you know good effect to make it look very distinct the chest plate and everything so i like it a lot very very cool with that let's go ahead and get into transformation first step you're going to come around to the back and if you don't already have these down Fold these down and push them in. They'll kind of peg onto the sides here. There's a tiny little tab right there. Then we're going to unhook this from the back. You can see that there were two translucent orange tabs. Now I will say, I believe this piece is all translucent plastic painted green. So hopefully over time that will be okay. I believe Tarns was the same, but I don't remember. Once you get that to about here, you're going to spin that around 180 degrees. And just let that hang out for a moment. You're going to come to the chest and unpeg that. So you want to kind of lift this up. And this has two pegs as well that were pegged in. Again, translucent plastic painted, but it looks good. Uh, at this point, we're going to grab these pieces here, the kind of whole shoulder tread pieces, and pull them out like that. And then they will start to rotate down. So you want to kind of rotate the head back, and that will fill this space. And then as we can start to rotate these around. Now, for whatever reason, this one rotates around a little better on mine. That will probably happen. That was popping off for me a lot. I know it's because I moved this up too quickly. But I've had some difficulty getting this one to pop out far enough and spin around. But there we go. So let's rotate the head inside, and then we can pop this back on. It's very simply just two little nubs right there that fit into a channel here. So it's really not that big of a deal if it pops off. So then we can just kind of leave that there. 
So at that point, we have this where that's supposed to go, come down to the legs, and you can fold them up like that, and then you can just peg them together, very simply. Uh, we'll kind of leave them out here to the side. So next, we want to take the arms, spin these around like this, And then you want to rotate the arms like this. These green pieces are going to flip around 180, like that. Uh, but they need to be on the top, so I'm doing something incorrectly. Uh, no, that's, yeah, that's right. I had it backwards. Okay, so yes, yeah, so then you can see how there's kind of an angle here. So you're going to want to push that up as high as you can and then just rotate the fists around 180 degrees. Now, technically, you don't have to. They just do that to kind of hide them because, unfortunately, they do just kind of stick out. Uh, at this point, you can see that there is a tab slot right here on the forearm, right there. That's going to tab onto the leg here like this. So you want to utilize uh, the angle in here to bring this over and peg this in. Now, the legs are probably in the way a little bit, so... There we go. You want to use the get the knees out of the way so the hands can fit in that space. Then you're going to come down to this, and this is going to open up. This can be a little difficult, but it's not too bad. You can see that there's a hinge right here, and you want to flip this piece out. So flip. There we go. And then you can bring this around. There's a tab right here, which is going to tab in... To a tab slot it's hard to see it but it's in there and again if you've transformed tarn nothing new this popped out so pop that back in come on now there we go and then this is just going to fold down like that so now we are going to repeat that process over here on this side so flip this around 180, bend that like that, rotate the fist, bring this in, and peg this to the side of the leg, like that. Then you're going to flip open this piece, and then unpeg this, bring this around, and then bring this in and peg that in. All right, at this point, you can drop this down. You can see that there is a tiny little translucent peg, which is going to peg in down here. So you're just going to fold this down. Oh, I'm sorry, it's actually the middle. It's the middle spot right there. So bring this down, and that will peg into place, like so. And then you're going to utilize those double knee joints. So unhook that. And then there are uh, some spots right here and here that are going to tab in right there and there. And then this and this will peg into that. So you just bring these down and line that all up. All right, I have to bend this more. Come on. There we go. And then that will all peg in. And then you're pretty much done. The last step, let me put this down and remove the camera. Get your um, cannons. Move this piece around like so. Peg that in here and here. And then these two tabs are going to drop into these two tab slots right here. And there you go. There is bludgeon in his tank mode. Oh, I don't have this. There we go. The head was still... Sometimes, I will be honest, the head doesn't seem like it wants to fit in that space all that well. But, it's fine. And then you can take the sword and peg it into either one of these spots here just for storage. Come along now. There we go. So there is bludgeon in tank mode. Looks pretty good. Uh, turret can kind of move around because of that gray piece. So that's nice. You can spin that around. You can move these ever so slightly, but they will start to hit into the leg. 
So at least it does have that turret because that gray piece is separate. Um, I guess technically you could move these out to the side if you wanted to. But yeah, it's a fun little tank. Other than that, he doesn't have wheels. He's got like fake molded wheels, but they don't actually move or roll or anything. So completely up to your imagination. But yeah, it's a good looking tank mode. I like how it still kind of has the skull face here. This is not connected correctly. There we go. I like how it still kind of has the skull face on the front. I like that. But yeah, it's a good looking tank mode. I like the color scheme. Doesn't do a ton in this mode. Uh, again, you can kind of have the turrets rotate, but that's about it. But I like it. Looks good. I think Bludgeon is great. I mean, it was a really good mold to start with, and they've done a really great job turning it into Bludgeon. Color scheme is fantastic. I absolutely love the head sculpt. That samurai helmet with kind of the beautifully painted face just really, really looks good. Plus, you kind of have the skull motif on the chest plate that they did, which really works out. Uh, articulation's great. Again, this is all the same from the Tarn mold, but all the accessories are great. The way you can kind of have so many different configurations with the two blasters and then the samurai sword really, really looks good. And we're super glad that was included. So I don't really have any problems with this. If you love the Tarn mold, you're going to love this one. It's just a really great use of a good mold and definitely worth picking up in my opinion. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.